Affinity Photo's live stacking functionality can be used to completely remove objects from a scene. For example, I've shot several images of this street here, and as we can see, there are pedestrians and vehicles in every image. It would be virtually impossible at this time of day to photograph this street without any activity. But what we can do is perform a mathematical stacking operation on this set of images to remove all of the objects. So in Affinity Photo, we will go to File, New Stack, add our images here. Just select them all. You can add any type of supported raster format, so JPEG, TIFF, PNG, for example. You can also stack raw files, although I would always advise to pre-process your raw files first to a format like TIFF, just so you can have more tonal control over the raw development and perhaps perform things like highlight recovery or shadow boosting if you need to. So we can click Open. And for this example, we do want to align our images because I shot them handheld. If you shot on a tripod, you may not necessarily need this option. We can click OK, and Affinity Photo will then align our images and create a new document for us with a live stack group. OK, here we go. As you can see, we've actually got the final result appearing already. Let's move across to the Layers panel and we'll see how this works. So here is our live stack group. If we expand it, you can see all of the images we added are now pixel layers contributing to the live stack group. This icon here allows us to change the stacking operator currently in use. Median will remove pixel detail that is not consistent across the set of images. Mean will average that pixel detail, so now you can begin to see trailing. Outlier will instead expose all of that pixel content. And then you have other operators like maximum and minimum, which will blend through the brightest and darkest pixels. We'll stick with median for now though. And this also gives us complete control over our composition. So what I might do, for example, is isolate each layer. To do that, I can hold Option on Mac or Alt on Windows and click through each of my layers in turn until I find one that I might want to take an object from. So for example, I might want to use this bus. What I need to do now is duplicate this layer. So Command J on Mac, Control J on Windows, then drag it out above the live stack group and add an empty mask layer. So I can hold Option on Mac, Alt on Windows, whilst I click on the mask layer icon down here. Then I want to select the paintbrush tool, increase my width, decrease my hardness, and across on the color panel, change to pure white. And this will enable me to reveal the bus, like so. I'm just using the left and right square bracket keys to decrease and increase my brush width where necessary. And there we go. I've just brought through the double decker bus on its own. So to end this video, let's quickly explore why this stacking procedure works. If I isolate my layers, you'll notice that between each image I've shot, I have enough pixel information to work with. For example, in this image, we have this couple standing here. They have moved slightly in this image. In this image, this area is now unpopulated. And again, in this image, a much wider area is now unpopulated. This means that the stacking procedure has this information to work with. Similarly, over here, in some of the later images, we have vehicles like the bus. But in earlier images, this area is clear, as you can see. So this means that when we finally composite all of these layers together in a live stack group, with our additional bus layer turned off, it has enough information there to successfully remove the object from the scene. So there we go. A quick guide to object removal using stacking. Hope you found it useful and thank you for watching.